Hello my dear friends, and welcome back to another Star Wars news update. Today we're going to begin with a piece of Star Wars lore, and then we're going to move on to some movie and TV show news. So no more jibber jabber, here we go. This concerns a character from the expanded universe who has come into canon. The Obi-Wan Kenobi show got Star Wars Legends fans really excited when Corrin Horn made a surprising appearance. But he's not the only character who originates in the EU to appear in this Disney Plus series. Duchess Selly Organa, a member of the House of Organa and the sister of Leia Organa's adoptive mum Brea, was a background character from Obi-Wan Kenobi Part 1. But did you know this character has an extensive backstory in the expanded universe, dating back to the 1995 Barbara Hamley novel, Children of the Jedi? There is one key difference between the character in Legends versus Canon. In Canon, she's Brea's sister, but in her original appearances, she was the sister of Bale. But in both cases, she is a character born into wealth and privilege. She also features briefly in the 2002 Dark Horse comic, The Princess Leia Diaries by Jason Hall. I absolutely love background details like this. And so now guys, the big news of the day. As we approach 2024, we've been getting quite a few updates over the last few days about what Lucasfilm has in store for us. And following the rather disheartening update that we're only getting two Star Wars shows in the new year, Today we have more news, and we're going to begin with the movies. Yesterday, on ProductionList.com, as reported by Nerdist, there was a rumour floating round that the 2026 Star Wars film, The One Concerning Rey, is going to start shooting in London on April 7th, 2024. This was a very peculiar date. For one thing, April 7th is a Sunday, so this was just believed to be an estimate. And coincidentally, if this were to be the date that they start filming, it's exactly one year on from the date the project was first announced, back at Celebration. But here's the problem. This rumour has already been debunked. According to sources at Star Wars Newsnet, the script for the movie is reportedly not finished, and due to the delays caused by the strike, they don't expect filming to begin until the summer. In other words, April is premature. But if they do start filming the week after April 7th, so the week beginning April 8th, that Wednesday marks Daisy Ridley's birthday and the birthday of yours truly. That's right, I share a birthday with Daisy. How cool is that? But anyway, here's what's interesting. As this rumour started spreading, we started to see reactions from fans who are not generally in the Star Wars community, but are more casual fans. These tweets and Reddit posts, this news that spread like wildfire, reached a pretty significant portion of social media users who've been out of touch with Star Wars, but nonetheless, are interested in when the next film is coming out. And I saw a massive wave of fans who are very confused, asking why we need more stories with Rey. Many who've been out of touch who don't follow all the latest news, or don't even watch all of the Disney Plus shows, seemed dead certain Star Wars was done with Daisy and done with this era. And even within the diehard base, there are many of us just curious to see how this film performs. We're living in a very strange and unusual time for Hollywood and pop culture generally. Studios like Disney are not hitting those box office numbers the way they used to, and there's been more of an emphasis and shift to streaming services. Traditional cinema goers are staying home more, they're watching TV and movies on Disney Plus on Netflix, but as has been shown for Avatar The Way of Water, Oppenheimer, Barbie, Mario, The Spider-Verse, people will still go to their local theatre for movies that warrant that experience. It wouldn't be too crazy to assume with its legacy on the big screen that a Star Wars movie is going to bring in big numbers as well. Going to a Star Wars film has always been an event, and yes, even though the 2026 film is a Rey movie, Lucasfilm are still expecting a solid box office. Now if we get into a discussion of if this film was a good idea in the first place, that is a whole other subject. While this does give Rey's character another chance, hopefully better written under Stephen Knight, I would have thought the best business strategy for Lucasfilm, in what is going to be their first Star Wars movie in seven years, by the time 2026 comes, would be a movie representing a new age of Star Wars, even if it is something like The High Republic, or James Mangold's film going all the way back to the dawn of the Jedi. It might not attract the full potential of a reinvigorated and enthused Star Wars fanbase to continue the sequel era, which was in and of itself divisive. But anyway, this is the next film coming out, it is what it is. So how is it going to perform? Well, the best thing going for it is the curiosity of most fans, and the time between the last film and this one. But honestly, it's really hard to predict, because while there are many who are apathetic, there are definitely those who loved 7, 8 and 9. 
There is something to be said, even from those who, as I say, didn't like Rey as a character, about fans who miss traditional Star Wars. Going to the cinema, seeing the opening crawl, which Kathleen Kennedy confirmed is back, and taking it all in, hoping for a great film, stunning visuals, the hero's journey, and an expansion of the space opera galaxy we love so much. I want Star Wars to succeed, so I hope for the best, but at this time it's really hard to tell if Star Wars fans want this kind of film, and what the box office is going to look like. Okay, so moving on to Star Wars shows, this will come as no surprise to anyone, it follows on from the update I put out a couple of days ago, but Best Spin Bulletin have now confirmed, and all season 2 has been pushed to 2025. In the same year we're expected to get The Mandalorian season 4. They say yesterday, I decided to take a bit of a victory lap in an article I wrote covering a Disney UK press release that confirmed Skeleton Crew had been delayed into 2024 and did not list out all season 2 for release. The victory lap wasn't to celebrate the delay of any series, but rather to showcase the accuracy of a report I published three months ago, which many online have tried to fight against, wrongly credit another outlet, or don't credit Bespin whatsoever. So skipping ahead just a bit, now another reliable outlet, Gizmodo, and a trusted writer for the outlet, Jermaine Lucia, have corroborated what I reported three months ago in regards to Andor's second season, that it's been delayed into 2025. Lucia took to X to say this, Quick update on this story, Andor almost certainly moved to 2025, while Skeleton Crew and the Acolyte are two 2024 live-action Star Wars shows. So as I say, not too surprising, but it's good they're going to take their time, there's a lot of filming still to do, the strikes put a pause on things when there was about a month or two left to shoot, and if Tony Gilroy decided to shake a few things up, do some restructuring and some rewrites, then I'd rather they take this time. I'd rather wait an entire year if it means the story is going to reflect the showrunner's full vision. It's best to be patient if, like myself, you're a Star Wars fan who thinks Sound All Season 1 was one of the best Disney Plus shows that have been put out for any property. And so funny, my dear Meglorians, this headline gave me a good old chuckle. Natalie Portman says King Charles asked her at the Phantom Menace premiere in 1999 if she was in the original Star Wars films. And she replied, no, I'm 18. Natalie Portman appeared on Watch What Happens Live to promote her Netflix drama in May-December, and once again told Star Wars fans that she is more than open to reprising a role of Padme Amidala on screen. Listen to her, Disney, please. Portman was just a teenager when she landed a leading role in George Lucas's Star Wars prequels. Her first entry, The Phantom Menace, opened in 1999, when Portman was 18 years old. Asked by host Andy Cohen what it was like meeting the British royal family at the Phantom Menace premiere, Portman recalled this, I remember Prince Charles. He was then Prince Charles, and he asked me if I was in the originals. I was like, no, I'm 18, but he was very friendly. And then Natalie Portman says that nobody's asked her about returning to the Star Wars franchise, but quote, she's open to it. She said working on the prequel trilogy was quote, amazing, adding it was the first time she worked digitally. Natalie was asked by Taika Waititi if she wanted to be in his Star Wars film. Taika had forgotten that she was in the prequels, but nonetheless, given Taika's film as being set in a brand new era of Star Wars, it's not as if she's going to play Padme in that. And just before I go, Kelleran Beck, the sabred hand, has joined Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, a fantastic character who, you know what, could appear in Tales of the Jedi Season 2. Imagine if Dave and John decide to put the rest of the flashback of Grogu's Order 66 memory, or part of it, in animated form. But with that said, my dear friends, that brings us to the end of today's Star Wars news update. Did you have fun, and did you enjoy it? If you did, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video. May the Force be with you, always.